Okay, first thing I gotta say is listing my favorite 30 cards of all time was hard. I was gonna make a top 15, but then I had to expand it to 30. I should have expanded it to 50 just because I like so many cards. But the biggest challenge was listing cards 5 through 10. That, that was hard. Cards 1 through 4 are set in stone, but 5 through 10, that was, that was hard listing them. Okay, for example, I had the Viper at number 10 and the GTO at number 9. Today, I think I like the Viper more than the GTO. Like, my mind changed a little bit today. But I constructed this list like two weeks ago and I really don't feel like flip-flopping it. So, you know, just for the record, they're so evenly matched. You know, I just like the Viper a little more today because I just got off of autotrader.com and saw all the cheap ones. But, you know, I'll just stick to my list. Number nine is the 05 to 06 GTO. This is a car I actually almost bought. I was a pen signing away from buying it, but I had to sleep on it and test drive other things first. But I still love the car. It was great. I enjoyed it. One of the best sounding stock cars of all time. You don't even need an aftermarket muffler for it just because it sounds so good. A lot of people don't like the looks. I personally love them because I'm more into sleepers. This is a car that looks big in the pictures, but in person they're actually really small. I saw one next to a brand new Camaro and the new Camaro dwarfs this thing. So it's actually a car that looks a lot better when you see it in person. It, it, it does catch your eye, because when I first saw one, I, I really liked it. I'm really uh, not interested in the newer cars. If you look back on my list, a lot of the cars are from the 90s. But this is one of the new cars that caught my attention, and I almost bought one. So close to getting one. I'm actually trying to convince my friend he has a Grand Prix GTP right now, and he's looking for another car, so I'm, I'm trying to sell this on him so I could live vicariously through him. So number nine is 05 to 06 GTO. Great cars. Number eight, nicest exotic of all time. Uh, this is one of the cars I would buy if I won the lottery. You know, that, that's the only other way I'm going to own one of these things. I was toying with the idea of buying a replica, but it's just not the same. You know, maybe if they made a replica the exact same size and made it as fast as the original, I would buy it, but it's just one of those things that'll never happen. Uh, most people my age prefer the Countach, but, you know, I thought the Testarossa was nicer. And, you know, I, that's why it's a lot, you know, that's why it's in the top 10 and the Diablo is not. I just like this car a lot more, even though the Diablo is still nice, but this car is just better looking in my eyes. You know, it's my opinion. You could like the Diablo or Countach more if you want, but uh, number eight, 84 to 91 Testarossa. They're even more impressive in person. Okay, to number seven, 92 to 93 GMC Typhoon. My first car was actually a 89 S10 Blazer with a 4.3 V6, 160 horsepower. It wasn't nothing much. I mean, I was happy to have it in high school, but uh. This is a car I gawked over just because it's built on the same blazer I had, but this thing had 280 horsepower, all-wheel drive. When this thing came out, it was whipping on the Ferraris of the era, so this thing was bad. Uh, what would Darth Vader drive if he needed an SUV? This thing, a very nice truck. Uh, if I didn't want to go off-roading, this would be the SUV I would buy to fill my SUV need, but that's probably never going to happen. But you know, I always like them, and it's always going to have, it's always going to be a top 10 car. And just a little ahead of it is another Darth Vader car. This is the first time, first and only time, I believe, in GM's history that they made a car faster than the Corvette, you know, from the same year. And the Grand National was just destroying everything, and it still does. It's one of those cars that. There's just a bunch of them in the 10s and 9s, you know, running in super high quarter mile times. The only drawback with this thing, that the one thing that kills it for me and why I don't have one, it, it's not a manual. It doesn't come with a manual. And I think everyone in the car should have a manual for their performance cars, but just love these things. They're, they're badass. Watch the commercial. You know, the song's bad to the bone. So, and which it is, so YouTube search, um, Buick Grand National commercial. It's corny, but it's just a cool car. You'll like it. If you're into cars, look up that commercial. 
Number 5, 81 to 83 DMC DeLorean. This is a car, this car was my dream car from the time I was in 7th grade to 10th grade. So it was my ultimate dream car for 3 years when I discovered internet, you know. Well, f f let me back up. I fir when I first saw this car, I, I was in awe by it. You know, I saw it in Back to the Future. I didn't care for what it looked like in Back to the Future. I think it looks like shit in Back to the Future. But then I saw a real one, a stock one, like when I was in seventh grade on the road. And, you know, it was amazing. So a year later, my friend got internet. That was in 98. So it was still dial-up internet. First thing I did was look up everything of the DeLorean I could find. And I actually printed out printed out a bunch of things and I still have it I made like a little binder about the DeLorean because I, I I wanted one so much so it was it was my undisputed dream car from 7th to 10th grade but that all changed and cars 1 through 4 one of the cars in that list dethroned the DeLorean as my favorite dream car of all time I still love the DeLorean it's another car I would buy if I won the lottery or maybe, I said this about the old 442, but maybe this is a car I need to buy, you know, a junked up one to restore. The one thing that keeps this car, the, the one thing that kept this car from being my ultimate dream car, only 130 horsepower. I just can't live with the fact that a Ford Escort could beat this in a drag race. But if this thing had... I mean, it was 1981, so that's understandable, but if this thing at least ran 14s, even high 14s in the quarter, that would be more acceptable. But it only ran 19s in the quarter mile, and that's just not going to cut it. Still a gorgeous car. still love the thing. I still look on eBay and look at them, you know. And I actually toyed with the idea a few times of buying it. But, um, yeah, this... It's a car I'm always going to love. I, I still watch videos on YouTube about them. I almost don't care that it's slow, but if someone did beat me at the light and all they had was like a Ford Escort, my pride would be hurt a little bit. Still awesome though.